can solar and wind solve our renewable energy problems? I don't believe so. And I think I can show you why with a simple calculation. There are billions and billions of dollars being spent at the moment on solar farms, on wind farms. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of rooftop solar being installed. It seems to work, so what's the problem? Well, we all know that solar and wind are intermittent. The sun doesn't shine at night. It doesn't shine on many days. Uh, wind doesn't blow all the time. There can be high pressure systems over the continent, continent of Australia, for instance, my home country, that can sit there for days and covering the entire country. So we do need a lot of storage. So how much storage do we need? Is it, would it be an hour? Would it be a day? Would it be a month? It's going to be a lot. And the only practical form of storage at the moment is a lithium ion batteries. So we can do a calculation of what the cost of the required storage would be. It would be accurate to a, to a reasonable approximation. And what is that number? Let's have a look. Let's have a look at the figures and use the case of Australia as an example. Now, the annual electricity use in Australia at the moment is 200 terawatt hours. Now, how much storage would be required? Well, let's take a guess at it. We know that an hour is not enough, a day is not enough, a month is probably too long. Weather conditions stay over the country for extended periods of time. Let's make a bit of a guess and say seven days storage is required. A reason, it's a pro, an approximation, perhaps a reasonable one. So what we would require would be seven days out of 365 multiplied by the 200 terawatt hours that we need per annum. That comes out to 3.8 terawatt hours of storage required. Now what's the present cost of lithium ion storage batteries to store this 3.8 this terawatt hours of energy? Well, the most recent installation uh, of a lithium ion grid, style, grid scale battery in Australia was the upgraded 193.5 megawatt hour Tesla Hornsdall battery in South Australia at a total cost of Australian dollars 172 million. So that's $889 per kilowatt hour of storage. So that one's installed. Here's one proposed. The Torrens Island 250 megawatt battery in South Australia, it'll be operational by 2023. Total cost of $180 million. So that's $720 Australian dollars per kilowatt hour. Now the Australian Energy Market Operator, together with the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organisation in Australia, has estimated that by 2022, about now, the cost of large scale, long discharge lithium ion batteries for this sort of usage will approach $400 per kilowatt hour. So that's an estimate. So what do we choose? 889, 720, or the estimated 400. Well, let's choose the 400. So at that cost, 400 billion Australian dollars per terawatt hour, what's the cost of the battery? Well, we need to store 3.8 terawatt hours at a cost of 400 Australian, 400 billion Australian dollars per terawatt hour. So multiplying those two numbers together comes out to Australian dollars 1.5 trillion. That's about 1 trillion US dollars. So this is almost equal to Australia's annual GDP, which is about 1.7 trillion. So 10% of Australia's GDP would be spent on the battery. But it doesn't end there. The battery life is about 10, maybe up to 15 years. There'd be some scrap value, but basically this 1.5 trillion 
has to be spent again every 10 to 15 years. There's no allowance in these figures above for the growth of electric vehicles, which would be dramatic probably with a renewable system. It doesn't include the cost of the wind turbines, the solar panels, the installation costs, the inverters, or the land. And incidentally, these inverters are required because solar and wind are not synchronous power. They slave off the synchronicity of the existing uh, system, the existing grid. So if we had 100% solar and wind, each asset would have to have an inverter and they're very expensive. There's no allowance for the extra solar panels and wind turbines to enable battery recharge. So if we had very little solar and wind for the two, three, four, five, you know, God forbid, seven days, and then the system comes back up to, uh, to capacity, the batteries need to be recharged. So the system has to handle the full load plus recharging those batteries in a reasonable time. So that would require extra solar panels and extra turbines. So I think there's some really serious issues about this, uh, this, uh, this concept of using lithium ion batteries and solar and wind to give Australia 100% renewable energy. I can't help but uh, think that the system just doesn't work and there are a lot of uh, issues to be covered uh, before we can plan to build a system, a system that is depending on as yet undiscovered um, storage.